Hello, my wellbeing buddies. It's Steve, the mental health nurse. And as you can see, this is my story. And I just want to explain why I've started this channel, really. So I became a mental health nurse, like many in the industry, because I'm an expert by experience. And what I mean by that is I have lived experiences with mental health and I'm going to share that journey with you because I think I'm now in a really lucky position where I'm able to manage my mental health. I am lucky in the fact that my life is now in a place where I feel mentally um, strong and that's because of all the things that I've learned through my journey. And I want to kind of share some of the things around becoming a nurse and, and going to university and this weird stereotype that it's for the privileged, etc. And that's not the case at all. So when I when when I was born, I, I, I got an older sister, and I've got a twin brother, and I've got a younger sister. And ultimately we lived in a council house there wasn't a lot of money uh, and there wasn't many people in my family that had ever been to university let alone completed school properly and ultimately when I was in my earlier years so about the age of 14 up I was involved in um, some sexual assaults which then triggered some episodes of mental health. So it's important to say that was nothing to do with my family. It was an external group of people. And uh, I was involved in a paedophile ring where five other children were assaulted. One of those people took their lives, unfortunately, and um, that was a lot for me to process. Uh, and if that wasn't enough, I didn't do very well at school. I then was diagnosed as being dyslexic, so that then became a problem. And then later in life, it came out that I had ADHD as well. So I had the whole shebang of mental health problems and neurodivergence. And that puts up a lot of barriers. It puts up a lot of barriers, and it meant that I went through a lot of trauma and a lot of stigma. And I remember going to my doctor and I was crying because of the, the recent assault. I was about 18 at the time. So I kept this all quiet and nobody had known about it. And I was crying to my doctor and he said, oh, you're very upset here, had some antidepressants. And I was like, no, 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 I'm not depressed. I'm just crying unconsolably for lots of reasons, but I didn't want to share them. So that was kind of my beginning of mental health. And I thought, what kind of, how? How does that help people? At the same time, in my family, we had um, a nan who had got uh, early stages of dementia. My, the, we had um, people in my family that had poor emotional regulation. So I'd witnessed self-harm, I'd witnessed suicide attempts, um, and I was going through my own piece of trauma as well. So there was quite a lot there for me to get my head around. And ultimately, I carried all of that. Nobody knew. And at the age of 19, I tried to take my life twice. And the impact of that rippled out. And, and obviously, I got all the labels. You're selfish. How dare you? And, um, you know, you're taking up a hospital bed from people. And that was the nurses, actually, in the hospital that said that. So my experience in primary health care was pretty shocking. And my experience of secondary health care was pretty appalling. And ultimately, none of that actually helped me. And I thought, well, this is going to be a long journey. And what I was told, I met this wonderful lady, and if she's out there, her name was Ada Williams, uh, Francis uh, Ada Williams. And um, she said to me, see if you've got a choice, you can either live or die. And I thought... Well, it's not as profound as Confucius or Confucius or whoever he is. And it, it's not one of the most profound things I've ever been told, but it was one of the most honest things that I was told. So luckily I chose to live and I started in social care uh, as a job. And I met this wonderful lady called Mary Babbage and she was my matron. And she inspired me to live life 
and do well. And I've, I worked in social care and I was working in a dementia service. Uh, it was an EMI, a dreadful name, really, when you think about EMIs, um, elderly mental institutes. Uh, obviously, we don't call them now that. But I was working in a dementia home and I did my first MVQ, uh, did my first MVQ level two. And Mary was my assessor and um, she was no mean and easy pushover. She made me work for that. And I had to, you know, do all of this cool stuff and I was learning skills. And I felt something in my brain click. For the first time, I was in my lane of learning. So with dyslexia, I got it. I could do hands-on. With this ADHD piece, it helped slow everything down. And I, I kind of got a bit of a goal and a career. And I understood where all my spiraling thoughts and negative thinking and impulsivity had come from. So that was really helpful. And at the end of it, I said to, to Mary, I said, oh, you know, I'd love to be a nurse. Um, and I had some really amazing role model nurses in our nursing home. It was Thomas Nursing Home. It's not there now, unfortunately. But from that, I had a role model. I had somebody that I wanted to aspire to be. I had kindness and compassion. And I remember a conversation she said to me. She said to me, Steve, you could be a nurse. Yeah, granted. And you could help one or two people, maybe 16 a day. She said, or oh, you could be a teacher and teach people to have the same values and the belief systems as you. You could teach that resilience. You could teach that lifeness stuff and, and coping skills. And for every person you teach, they will then teach. And the lives that you can affect will be so many more. And I thought, oh, I like the sound of this. I will have purpose. I'll have a reason. So off I went. I went and done my level three MVQ. Didn't think I would ever do that. I did my level four MVQ. Never thought I would do that. And I became a manager of a care home. So I was looking after a small residential home. And in that service, and this was down in uh, Peacehaven in Brighton at the time, I became a registered manager and or a care manager, sorry. And I completed my train trainer qualifications and assessing qualifications. And in 2009, I became a qualified teacher, which I never thought I would do. Um, by 2011, 12, I think, I got my QTLS status, which was qualified teacher in the lifelong sector. And I had fulfilled the first pledge to teach. So I did. Learned the hard way, I'm not a lot of that. And from that, I enjoyed and loved every moment of my life but I wasn't this, I didn't get there. And I could feel my biological clock ticking by. And um, in my early thirties, I'd made a pledge to my granddad who had then passed away. So I got lost in bereavement in all of that as well. So as my granddad passed away, I'd always promised him by the age of 30, I would be a nurse. Uh, and that was because my nan had mental health and a lot of my family had mental health. So I went with that. Ultimately, what happened is I was a little bit late on that promise. Uh, I was I was about five years too late on that promise. Uh, but I made it. I got into university and um, I got in through the process called clearing. So I couldn't get in through the normal way, but I got in through this process called clearing. And that was in West London University. And I did my first year and everything was going well. And then I had relationship breakdown. Um, I ended up becoming bankrupt. I lost my property and everything just spiralled, absolutely spiralled. However, I thought, OK, I'm not going to drop out. I'm going to carry on despite all of this stuff because you can't stop it. You know, there are certain things in life. You just have to pick yourself up and dust yourself down and go, all right, that was hard. That was difficult. But I'm a bit more resilient for it because I've got through it. Did that. And needed a bit of time out. I went back six months uh, and I had to move. So I went from where I was living down to uh, Tunbridge, where my mum lived, and moved in with her for a couple of weeks. And that was great. I went to swap universities and did my second and third year of my nursing degree. So it certainly wasn't easy. Um, and I think anyone that tells you their nursing journey is easy is a liar. From that, I then knew I was where I wanted to be but now I was like oh now what do I do I'm a teacher I've got my teacher in one hand I'm a nurse on the other 
and I want to do it all. So I became a registered manager of a care service and then COVID hit. So we managed this service up in London and started and all of my life skills came through there. I completed a master's during a pandemic and lockdown and got my fellowship with ILM um, and thought, well, goes to show, Steve, you obviously need a bit of something in your life to keep you motivated. And then finally, I moved um, in this time. I, I married uh, my, my current partner. We, we have a two year old child now and um, he's got his complications. Bless him. And ultimately, I learned a new level of resilience, a new level of coping skills, a new level of optimism and upbeatness about the world. And then ultimately, in the last year, I spent the last year in a primary health care setting, working in a GP setting, uh, assess, treat and diagnosing common mental health problems. Um, and um, I wanted to complete my advanced clinical practice, um, which was another master's, because I felt that that was in my capability. And with all of my experience within mental health, I could do this. So I enrolled and I'm now currently working my way through my advanced clinical practice. So that will be my second master's, two degrees, two masters. And Ultimately, I never thought going back when I was 19 years old, taking my life for that first time, this is where I would be. But because of it, because of life, I got myself a tattoo. I got myself two tattoos, actually. I put one on my back, which is the word courage. Chinese symbol, I didn't want the word courage because I thought people would think that's a bit weird. Uh, but I knew what it meant. And I knew it just being there it gave me the thought that I have the courage to carry on and to keep going. So when life keeps hitting you with all of this stuff, that's life. You've just got to pick yourself up, dust yourself down, reframe your thinking, set yourself a new path and just go for it. And then I got myself a tattoo a, a year or so ago uh, with the word hope. And that's because in mental health, we all need hope. We need hope that we can recover. We need hope that we can achieve our hopes and goals. We need hope that we can improve the system and make it better for other people. And ultimately, what I was missing in my journey and in my recovery was the compassion and the kindness and the understanding. And I do believe that mental health is shaping and has come a long way. But I still hear the horror stories and I still hear the lack of compassion and the lack of empathy and the lack of signposting and the lack of resources. But ultimately, we all have the power in us to make a difference. And that difference is simply listening, listening to people, listening to their stories and recognising the true strength and the true resilience that peoples hold. And from that, carving them a new pathway of hope and recovery. And I hope that I will fill my pledge to Mary all of those years ago about reaching the number of people that I need to reach to make a difference, to show it doesn't matter where you're from, it doesn't matter the journeys that you've had, and it certainly doesn't matter the life experiences that you've got. It's the destination, it's where you're going with it all. And as long as you are true to yourself and true to your core beliefs and you keep going then you will succeed and I am a true believer a true believer that we have it in us to all achieve our absolute goals and dreams and it just takes that resilience and it takes around us the ability to rethink and the re and to reshape our thoughts. And the moment we do that, we remove all the obstacles in our way. And I guarantee you this, 95% of those obstacles, it's up here. And the moment you've done that, you can excel and you can succeed. You can live well, you can be well, you can achieve more and you can be more. Anyway, that's my story. That's why I became a mental health nurse.
There it is. That's my story. I'm Steve. Lovely to talk to you all. Welcome to my channel and I hope it gives you a lot of insight into the wonderful world of mental health.